remember when I was a lad, things were hard and time to rest. There's a silver line behind every cloud. Just poor people, that's all we were, making a living out of black land. We joined the band, we circled, sang the clown. Danny sang bass, Mama sang tenor, me and little brother. One of the things that excited me a lot about setting up this family camp, I realized that there is this incredible bond that gets created between children in a bunkhouse for three or four weeks. And it's a bond that extends for a lifetime. What if we could create an environment here at Echo Hill where families in the child welfare system could experience some of that same intimacy and bonding? And what Kinship Care is offering is an, is an opportunity for the child welfare system to, to search out who in the, the, the uh, ecological, in the social ecological system of this child uh, can they be safe with. Um, and often there is a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a relative who is willing to step forward and say, I'm willing to take this child and, and help them grow. In, in a healthy way. And that's the kind of program that, that we want this family camp to support. And we think, I think the family camp's an incredible complement to that. The scale of abuse and neglect in our nation is something that most people just don't fathom. Um, and we've got to start somewhere in terms of really working with uh, the families and helping kids recover from trauma. And the way I think you do it, and what we've learned from brain science research and from social research and family therapy is you help them in the context of a loving family. And you, if you have to, you create that loving family and you nurture the heck out of it. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do here at the camp. Robert don't want to go home. I don't know how I'm going to get him away from here. <laughs> <laughs> he told his daddy that uh, he's having a good time and he don't want to go home. When they get home, I know they're going to really miss this here. Yeah. yeah, you know. And I would really like to do it with them again. So, you know, seeing how much they love to do stuff like this here, you know, it gives you an insight on to what the kids really like to do, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, that you think that they just didn't have the courage to do, and they built up a lot of courage to do some of the things that they didn't normally do. You know, but they, they're, they're capable of doing. Right, it. and they went up that you. that uh, Echo Hill this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, they was like man. clockwork. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had to tell them to stop running. I said, boy, I wish I had y'all energy. <laughs> but they they've been having a great time. You know, really great. And I'm glad that you know we got this opportunity, you know, to come here, you know, and let them stretch their imaginations and uh, see what they could really do and see what they really like, because I've learned a lot about them. I also learn a lot about what's happening, really, in the interior life of the family while they're here at camp. For example, one of the things I learn is that these caregivers see their children in a different light out here at Echo Hill. They see them as more competent, as more risk-taking in a positive way. They see a little girl that's willing to climb on a horse for the first time. They see a small boy who, who is willing to practice swimming in deep water. They see a, a, another child who who is able to separate from the caregiver and go off with one of our counselors on a nature hike. 
Now, these are very small steps, but they start seeing a kind of competency. A little boy that can hit the baseball, the grandpa never even knew the kid liked sports. And that's not really the grandpa's fault. It's just a reflection of how complicated and stressful their lives are in the city. And then for most of us, it's ding, 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 and the telephone rings, and automatically on the right there, you know that your life is about to change. To change. Mm. That's right. Yeah. So it's for both of us, you know, uh, a life-changing experience. So Because we don't trust very many people either. So, so when we sure. let go to let them trust somebody, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. I, I'm really yeah. surprised. No matter, how, no matter how nice somebody <laughs> is to you, you're always mm -hmm. like, what's their motive? Yeah, exactly. yeah. The number one thing in this vacuum is protection of your children. All the time, no matter where we go, we're constantly keeping our hand on that job. Mm -hmm. Because we, we know that with all the red tape and all the threats, if anything happened, you got to deal with the government, so to speak. So we are not a group of people that easily allow the children to get outside of our protection. That comfort zone. That comfort zone. So when we arrived here, and I can only speak for myself, when I arrived here, I'm used to having that kind of control. Mm -hmm. We know where the kids are, what they're doing at all times. Got here, met some of the counselors, uh, observed how things was flowing. You're going? By Saturday, I'm now at ease. Mm -hmm. Just let the kids go. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I know now that they're okay here. They don't have to be under my hand, under my belt at all times. We can help them get back into life and into, into the fun of life and into hopefulness about being a ball player or being a swimmer or all those things that, that, uh, that help children, you know, love being children. You ready to party? Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. Don't swing it around, don't swing it around. Don't swing it around. He's gonna fall. Here, turn around one side to take a picture. There we go. Look at his teeth in there, inside his mouth. See it? Yeah. Look, his teeth. Throw that. Inside that, his mouth. Look, look at his mouth. Here. Hold him like that, because he has a little shark. Open your hand big. Grab his, his whole thing. Something else that I was impressed with um, is with the raising the lowering of the flag. You know, when, when you see the kind of country we live in now and all the things that are happening, the flag is really disrespected. Uh, there's, um, you know, my age group, we grew up, the flag was important. Uh, mm -hmm. We grew up mm -hmm. saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag in the, in the schools. They don't do that anymore. They took mm -hmm. the prayer out of schools. So these things are not in, in really that popular anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but to do that here, I thought that kind of instilled the importance of, you know, the, Please join us in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, one of the things I feel like we're doing to help traumatic kids here uh, and kids that have been through such trauma is that we're helping them 
reclaim their childhood. That these are kids for whom we, we can't eradicate the bad dreams and the traumatic memories they have. But what we can do is help create an alternative set of positive experiences with their caregivers uh, that will help them re-engage in life. So when you see um, uh, one of these children working all day in the archery range uh, to hit the target, or when you see one of them riding a horse or climbing a hill for the first time, or, or just looking at the, um, the amazing bugs that are under a rock you know, by the river, in those moments, these children are no longer fearful of the world or worrying about separation or, or, re, or having kind of re reclaimed memories of trauma in the past. They are totally present and excited about life. talking and mm -hmm. I have the youngest one who when we first got her because of what she went through the only person she even come close to getting the water is my son mm -hmm. and it took him forever to get her to get in and so for her to actually want to jump in by herself with a staff member was just breathtaking mm -hmm. I mean that was a big deal because she left me, and Linda was there to see it, and she was out there. So wow. this is a first for her to do that. So I did really well. Kudos to the staff. <laughs> I mean, it's just unbelievable that a staff could be this prepared for children and be able to feel them and, and just be able to talk to them and just say, you know, they don't even have to say it's okay and the kid will just walk on, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that is not um, an everyday thing. One of the things I got to do is try to get back to court to get permanency because my kids are still scared after mm -hmm. nine years and that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's it's wrong a... after nine years. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 you know, I just pray every day that the Lord takes away a lot of that fear from Brianna, but... Try, mm -hmm. Brianna, a couple. Help. I'll help you. How was your trip at? I'll help you. Was that Brianna? Your, head, your legs need to, to be right painting over there, that's right? That's it, that's it, right there. That's it, too. Now release it. Release, release it at once. Okay, so take your hand out. This should be released. You. Uh, All right, wow, now Brianna? we may retrieve our arrows. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, clap Bad your place. hand. <laughs> that nice. yes. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, oh, let me go get the camera. These two right here. You want to point them out to them right here? This one and this one. All by yourself. It's awesome. The whole family creates uh, one of the tools that we use here is it creates a memory book that every day they write and record and make pictures uh, in about what's been valuable that day at, at camp. And this is our effort not only to help the children reflect about their experience, because kids notoriously are non-reflective, you know, they're just living in the present. 
So if they have a half an hour each day with their caregivers, asking them, so what, what happened the day that was really great? This is a very healthy process for kids and they, they're able to draw pictures and make notes. So we have a family memory book that every family works on and takes home. I think the memory books are very, very important because it, it helps them uh, journalize different things. Where they come from was not real positive. And the thing, everything that we're getting here is so positive that going back to look, mm. they can see positive yet again. And when they go back into the city and face the same triggers, they go back to school uh, where they're, they're identified as foster children. Um, and all of these old triggers, yes, they will get, the tuning fork will get whacked again. But if what I'm saying has some validity to it, what it means is that they will now have an alternative set of memories and experiences to reflect upon to calm the tuning fork down. When they pull out those memory books, when they look at those pictures, when they tell this hilarious story about uh, um, uh, eating watermelon and spitting seeds at, at their grandma and grandpa at the picnic supper here, that during the retelling of those stories, they're going to recapture the kind of emotional balance that they had here at camp. And what, what, what better gift can you give kids than the tools to help themselves? And that's what I think we're doing. Every day we try to create a culture of appreciation, a culture of love, a culture of positive feedback, and here we call it kudos, and every evening we take about half an hour and uh, um, have a whole community discussion that's focused on giving public appreciation to someone in your family or someone in the staff that's done something that day that you appreciated. So. The kids will talk about a counselor that helped them hit a ball for the first time and they'll thank the counselor in front of the whole community. The caregivers will acknowledge uh, one of their older children that did such a nice job in helping one of their adopted children uh, during the day. And again, this is done publicly in front of, you know, there are 50 people there. Kudos to everybody in the talent show because they're brave enough to come out here and do it. Thank you, Mikaela. Mikaela. Okay. Mikaela's trying to say thank you. Kudos to my wonderful cancelers, Maxie, and Fred, for being awesome this weekend. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Uh, kudos to Philip and somebody else who took us up the hill. They were very patient with me. <laughs> we made it. Yes. Uh, kudos for all the loving memories that you've given uh, my daughter and Carlos. So thank you all.
Good to see everyone who played kickball yesterday. Yeah. That was a great game, great sportsmanship, everyone, and a special kudos to Chance, who I am pretty sure had back-to-back -back home runs. Oh. Yeah. Oh, nice, Chance. Good job. Good kudos to Wyatt for taking care of the kids while I wasn't there with him. Yeah. 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 Kudos to, uh, to Robert for, I think, first two times he's ever been fishing, he's caught three fish, maybe more already. <laughs> no big deal. You're right. So kudos, man. Awesome job. Yeah. Kudos to Deja for conquering her fear of riding horses. She wasn't, uh, wasn't ready to go the first time, but came back the second time and just hopped on and was ready to go. So. Yeah. Kudos to everybody at Echo Hill. The counselors and all, everybody that's here. I mean, you know, everyone has been so comfortable with each other. You know, it's just amazing, you know, and I'm not going to ever forget it. Big kudos to Dr. Freeman for allowing us all the opportunity to be here. You and your wife, definitely, because, I mean, without you, again, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you for your vision and, I mean, the sponsors that allow these caregivers the opportunity for, you know, allowing them the opportunity to be out here because, I mean, without this vision, it, it wouldn't be possible. So just thank you for allowing this. So what we'd like to do to end the evening is ask each each family if you'll stand up and find a little place on the tennis court here to, to form a circle. So you might want to put your shirts down. We have a friendship circle that we end each night with where the families uh, hold hands in a circle and we picked a, try to pick a song to sing that everybody knows and a couple of the caregivers helped and we came up with the old... Um, uh, Bill Withers song, Lean on Me, that most everybody knew. and So we all sing about three verses of Lean on Me together, and then we pass the friendship squeeze, the family squeeze around the circle. Uh, we talk about how the squeeze, like friendship, can be felt, not seen. And that it also signifies that no matter what conflicts or arguments you've had during the day, you end the day as friends, as family. It's part of our effort to quickly and intensely create a sense of community, uh, um, a world that is kind, that is supportive, that's healing. Um, a world's very different than the world they know back home. But you know, for most of these kids and many of these families, they've never experienced that as a real possibility in their life. And you experience it for three or four days as a real living possibility. You know it's possible. And it becomes a part of your interior, a part of your memory, a part of what you know is possible of, of uh, family relationships. And I have no doubt that come Christmas this winter, these families are going to take out their memory books and they are going to talk and laugh and cry and remember just wonderful stories from these three or four days. And you know, I feel very uh, lucky, very lucky indeed, that uh, Christina and Scott, George, these administrators in Houston believed enough in us to, uh, to make this work the way it has. Uh, I look forward to doing it for many years, to expanding the program, to more and more weekends, to uh, uh, encouraging our alumni from Echo Hill who have raised all this money to continue to raise it and to be a model of the kind of experiential, normalizing, therapeutic intervention that uh, abused children and, and family caregivers need to, to get back into this, this world um, and to get back away from the world of darkness and trauma and into the world of, uh, that's, that's not perfect, but into a world of, of real life.